Hiya folks, here's another one of our air fryer recipes. We're gonna do everything mostly in the air fryer apart from the mince. We're doing one of Sharon's favorite dishes and that is... Lasagna. Lasagna. Right, so we've got our dual trade uh, ninja air fryer at the moment, but um, we do, when we cook stuff in there, we like to cook in these glass dishes and a lot of people ask where we get them from. So these are them, they do come with lids, but you can buy them without the lids. As you can see there, we've got quite a few of these. And these actually come from Ikea. I've actually wrote down, because a lot of you do ask where we get them from. And if I can, I'll put a link in the description below. It's the Ikea 365 food container. And they're made of glass. And they are the one litre version, which is the 34 fluid ounce version. And at the moment on Ikea, if you buy them without the lids, they're coming in at two pounds 50, which is very, very good. So that's where we get them from, folks. So all Sharon does is get these little bits of foil paper folded over, and that's how we actually put these bowls in our Ninja air fryer, as you can see. It's just about the right size, and just fold them edges over like that. And then when you come to lift them out, all you're gonna do is unfold the tabs, give it a second because they will be hot, and then just lift them out like that. And that's how we get these glass bowls, which are the litre version, the 34 fluid ounce version into our, is it, is it the dual zone? Yeah. It's the AF400 we got, yeah. So this is the one we're using at the moment, folks. Right, so there are lasagnas and there are lasagnas at the end of the day. This is our little version of a lasagna. We put a few more ingredients in, slightly different ingredients than a bog standard uh, normal one, which they call a normal one, so don't shoot us, but we're gonna show you exactly what we got in these ingredients. One kilogram of beef mince, a packet of lasagna sheets, 500 grams of passata, a desert spoon of red pesto, a tin of chopped tomatoes, a desert spoon of tomato puree, one chopped green bell pepper, one chopped large onion, a few chopped mushrooms, three cloves of garlic, one mozzarella ball, some mature cheddar grated cheese, one pint of milk, a tablespoon of white flour and some Italian seasoning. Right, so we've just got our little little camping stoves here, folks. You might have a normal cooker, that's fine. So we're just gonna take this mince and we're just gonna brown this off first of all. You can do this in your air fryer. So we'll just break it down and then we'll start adding all the other ingredients there. Right, that's nicely browned off now, folks, as you can see. But I just wanna show you the amount of fat and liquid that you can get coming out of your mince. Uh, we don't really need all that in there, so we're gonna be draining some of that off. And now I'm gonna do that, folks. It's just literally, just hold your your main mince back and you can just tip that out into a bowl if you want. There you go. And as you can see, we're just draining that off now. There we go. So we got rid of most of that now. And some people actually save that. Our daughter saves yeah, that, doesn't yeah, she? she do puts that in a little ramekin, puts she it in the fridge, it, really. and uses that as a fat or a lard or whatever. So we will keep that. And just to make our life a little bit easier, folks, we're just gonna transfer the mince into a saucepan because we're gonna be adding now all the rest of the ingredients to that baby. And it's just easier to operate and stir in a saucepan. So we could have done the mince in a saucepan right from the beginning, shall we? Could have done, yeah. But we like washing up, don't we? I like the frying pan for that. Yeah. What you used to, isn't it? Right, so now it's time to add all the other ingredients. Now don't forget, you don't have to put a pepper in if you don't want. This is just our version. And we've got some finely chopped onion there as well. They're going in. <laughs> they're coarsely chopped. Hey? They're coarse, not fine. Right, well, they're, they're chopped onions. They're though. chopped onions. In with the garlic, folks. That red pesto for a bit of flavouring. This is optional. Yeah, again, you don't need to put the pesto in, but we again, it just imparts a nice little flavour in there, Sharon, doesn't it? Yeah. So you're putting in a dessert spoonful of that as well, just get that a mix round. Right, so in with the old uh, passata, this is Sharon, isn't it? Yeah. And we're going in with a whole 500 gram container there, folks. So we like to also put in some, um, What's that stuff called? Tomato puree. Tomato puree. That just depths to, adds a bit of depth to the colour a bit more, folks. Good squirt. Yeah. And this is basically like a, like a bolognese mix, Sharon, isn't it? It is a bolognese mix, really, isn't it? Yeah. Just Sharon's version. This is the way we like it. Yeah. Right, so next thing in is the tomatoes. Chopped tomatoes. Chopped in tomatoes. We'll whack them in. We'll also put in the uh, mushrooms. In with those. Just give that a little bit of a stir up first and then we'll add our Italian seasoning and then we'll put some salt and pepper in. Now you can put as much as this or as little as this as you want. I suppose you can put oregano in. These Wait, are That's got it all in there. That's a mixed Italian yeah. seasoning, so it's got everything in there. That's probably got a bit of rosemary in there as well. Yeah. Oregano, 
that sort of stuff. So get it going right the way through, folks. Just incorporating all them flavours now, as you can see there, look. And that's why we put the bits of green pepper in, folks, as you can see there. Just adds a few little coloured flecks in there as well. Right, we're going to put some pink Himalayan rock salt in, folks. I won't call it sea salt anymore because I keep getting told off for calling it that, even though it was mine from an ancient sea, Sharon, that uh, isn't there anymore. So put plenty in, folks. You want to really taste the bits of this. And this is not like your white salt you get, the uh, table salt. This is... Um, uh, got loads of minerals in this as well. And uh, again, loads of plenty of cracked black pepper in there, folks. And of course, you've got to have a blinking pepper mill like what we've got to put it in as well. Well, no, you can buy them like that now. What? Already. Of course, you can. And as you can see, folks, by the amount left in that, we use quite a lot of it. Oh, look, that's Jamie Oliver's one, Sharon. I wonder if he put them in there himself. Of course, he did. Right, we're just going to. Blip this away, folks, and make it come to a little bit of a boil. We'll just let it sit for a bit. And then we'll let it sit. Just so everything cooks, the tomatoes. Yeah, and always put a lid on, folks, if you can, because that keeps the steam in and it increases or shortens the cooking time, believe it or not. Right, so we've put that bowl over the side now, that saucepan full of the bolognese. She's had a little taste of it. What's it like? Very nice. Right, so that's over there. I've not had a go yet. I'll have a go later, folks. I can wait, you see. So she's going to do the white sauce now. Now, most people make, or they've seen how to do a white sauce, they make a roux. You do yours slightly different, don't you? Yeah. How do you do it? How do you do it? My mummy taught me. Right, so let's have a look and see how she does that. Right, so we're going to start off with the milk. So you just pour the milk straight in, don't you? Yeah. You don't mess about. How much you got there? About a pint? About a pint there. So a pint of milk goes in there, folks. And the flour, flour. this is uh, any flour or yeah, certain flour? Any flour. We've just got self raising flour here, folks, and we're just going to throw that straight in. There's no roux here. But you've got to keep it mixing and we use a balloon whisk to break up all the uh, little bits of flour so you don't get any clumps. So just keep whisking that folks and add the, add the flour in as you go. But you must keep it moving. Yeah. And you will find that will start to thicken up. Right, she'll be going for a couple of minutes now folks. I don't know if you can see, it's actually getting a bit thicker now. So uh, again, don't have that gas up too high because you will burn it at the bottom and you must keep turning it and st uh, stirring it around. And you'll see the difference now. I can see that coming thicker now, look. Right, so it's been about three minutes, folks. It's thickening up nicely. And all we're doing is putting a little bit of that grated cheese. That is mature cheddar we got there. Just going to drop a little bit of that in. We're not going to put too much in because that is the um, cheese we got for the topping, don't forget. So it just adds a little bit of a cheesy flavour to it. And as you can see now, that's thickening up really nicely now. So don't forget, folks, that was one tablespoon of flour we use self-raising it don't really matter whether you use plain or self-raising and that goes into a pint of milk and if it doesn't thicken up folks just add a little bit more flour there we go folks thicken up nicely so we'll set that to the side now and let that cool down and then we'll start to assemble our glass dishes with the lasagna sheets and bring it all together well done baby thank you Right folks, so it's now time to build your lasagna. Now as you can see, our white sauce is nice and thick now. Now don't forget, as I said to you before, depending on what your quantities are, if it is a bit thin, add a bit more flour in. If it's a bit thick, then just add a little drop more milk in, but it will thicken up as you can see there, as it stands, although this is still hot at the moment, it has got a skin on the top, so we're just keeping it stirring there. So we've got our white sauce there. We've also got our mix of uh, the, 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 the mince mix there. We've got our pasta sheets, and those of you who don't know what a pasta sheet is, they literally are sheets of dry pasta. And that's how you're gonna be laying them on top of your dishes when you're building it. So we've got our mozzarella ball there. That again, we're gonna be putting on. Just pulling apart. Just ripping it. You ain't gotta cut okay. it, you just rip it, it apart. It goes a lot further, believe it or not, if you just rip it. And we've also got our cheese there as well, folks. So let's get Sharon to start building this lasagna. There we go, so there's our two little dishes, folks. And all we're gonna do is put some on the bottom first, just to line the bottom of our ramekins there, so to speak. Are they ramekins? What are they? No, they Oven-proof dishes, aren't they? Dishes, yeah. Ramekins yeah. are little round things. Yeah, so we're gonna start with two, first of all. And if we've got any left over, we've got a third one, which we're gonna make up. If you need to cut them and break them, you just break them in half and just, it doesn't matter if they, they break in segments or what, just lay them on, fill the bottom. 
and uh, we're using probably one and a half to two. You can probably even do that, Sharon, yeah. yeah. That don't matter. Some people pour the white sauce on, but this is so runny, this sauce. I don't need the yeah. white sauce in between. So we're just going on again with another layer of our lovely, savoury bolognese mince there. There we go. Yet again, another two pasta sheets. There you go. So as I say, it doesn't matter if they're broken up because they're all going to just mould into it and get lovely and soft. We might as well just do the third Go on then, get the third one going, baby. And the beauty of having them lids, folks, is that we can put a lid on that and freeze it. So if you buy them with the lids on, the plastic lids, they are a little bit dearer, but um, it looks like this mix we've made is going to make three of these little bowls. Again, with the final one, just put two more sheets on the top. Spoon, I think. Oh, I've got to push that down, Shout, it's doing my head in. There we go, there we go. White sauce. And now with the white sauce, folks. Again, just ladle it over the top. Make sure you get into the corners. Oh, that lovely cheesy white sauce. And don't forget, folks, you could use that sauce if you were making a fish pie as well. It'll be perfect for a fish pie, that sauce. Mm. Just put that over the top, folks. So, right, okay, so we've got our white sauce on now, folks. And all we're gonna do with the remainder of that grated cheddar, make sure you get it all over there, folks. Put plenty on, because that's gonna be lovely and tasty on the top of that white sauce. And that'll go golden brown as well. So that's what we're looking for. And then get your mozzarella, folks. Comes as a little mozzarella ball. And literally just pick at it, and just dot it about the, uh, the top of the lasagna. And it does actually go a long way when you do it like this. If you cut it into slices, it won't go as far. So just dot it about. So there you go, folks. That's the mozzarella cheese on the white sauce and the lasagna's now built. Right, folks, so as you can see, Sharon's just lifting that into the uh, basket there with our little method we use with them bits of silver foil cut out, uh, turned over. And that makes life a hell of a lot of easier, folks, when you are uh, lifting them out. So into the air fry they go. We're gonna do, put them on together. Right, so first of all, we're gonna press match, and then we're gonna put it on air fry, which is 200 degrees centigrade. And we're gonna go for the time, which is the default time, the full 20 minutes, and just press start. There we go, we'll come back in 20 minutes, but we will keep a check on it. Okay, folks, we're coming up to the 20 minute mark. Getting ready now. There we go, cooking time has just ended. Let's just pull these out and have a little look. Oh, look at that, folks. Can you see that bubbling in the corner there? Look at that. Let's get the other one out. Oh, they look fantastic. We want it to be above 75 degrees centigrade there on the uh, inside of that. And then we see we're up to 82 there. And there we go on that one there. We're up to about 79, 80 degrees, just under 80 degrees on that one. Happy days. But let them cool down a bit, folks, just before we take them out, and then we'll plate them up. Right, and just to show the uh, ease of getting it out, folks, with these little things, we've just stuck them outside, as you can see, just so they cool off. And literally, you can literally just pull them out and plonk them down like that. And that's why we make these little thin strips, just to do that. And happy days, you've got no mess inside your air fryer containers, as you can see. So they can literally go back in. And Sharon will just put this one in now. Yeah. And don't forget, folks, if you want to make these a little bit wider so that you're not balancing so much, feel free to make them a little bit wider just to make your life a lot easier. Right, folks, we're going to try and cut a segment out now. And Sharon's just loosening the edge off, first of all, just to make sure nothing's stuck around there. And then just cut through it. Oh, yes, look at that. Make sure you get right through them pasta sheets, folks. And then she's going to just spoon it out. Get it out. Oh, look at that. Oh, look. Superb. Look at that. And you're covered in white sauce as well, folks. Look. So there's the inside of it there. Oh, that looks absolutely lovely. Look. And there is our homemade lasagna. Baby, better than any shop-bought one that you can buy. It is. Let's, I've made it. Let's give it a taste. Mm. 
Well, this is it, folks. That looks absolutely fantastic. It's been standing for about five minutes now because it was piping hot, wasn't it? Mm. Bubbling away. And as normal, baby, I'll tell you what. Let's get some of that cracked black pepper on it because they come up in a restaurant and they go, oh, yeah. black pepper, sir? So we just put a bit of that oh, over the Well, if they're talking to me, they're going to be, they're not going to call me Madam Baby. Madam Baby, that's a new name for you. There you go. Let's get that down your gullet. Right, go on in you go. Let's see what you think that tastes like. Get a bit of everything on it, shall I? I can smell the pepper. <laughs> I can smell the pepper. It's like oh. toilet pepper. <laughs> Coming in. Well? Very, very nice. Very tasty. What, the onion. Is the pasta cooked in the middle? Pasta's cooked. Yep. Yeah. Very, very tasty. A lot more flavour than my favourite, which was Lidl, but... Yeah, she likes the little one, folks. But looking at this, oh, you're right there. It's gone down the wrong hole, isn't it? <laughs> can I have a go? Full of flavour. Oh, I can see all that tomato sauce in there, baby. I'm getting a bit of the bottom first of all, I'm going in for the bottom bit. Oh, here we go. Oh. 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 I've got to go in for that cheesy goodness on the top, baby. Cutting through that crust. And I'm going for that white sauce now. That bottom is a delight. Look at that, folks, look. It's not my fault. You've been like- That hot. You've got no effect. <laughs> oh. Drowning by yourself, now you want to- The chewiness of that mozzarella. Like you and that strong options. cheddar on the top. I take your options. Now I'm Brought together with that white sauce, which has got a hint of cheese in it as well. The onions. I could see little flecks of pepper in there, then bell peppers. What a great idea that is, folks. If you like them, put them in. If you don't, don't put them in. Do it to your taste. Mm. Leave them out and put them in. It's entirely up to you. And when you hit a bit of tomato, add in that passata mm. and also the pesto. Mm. Gives it a nice acidity. I know I'm taking control of this, baby. I know. I'm usually eating while he's going on, isn't he? I've got to go in again. He won't put the plate down. But don't forget, folks, these timings what we give you are just guidelines. You might have to put it for a little bit longer. You might have to cook it for a little bit less, depending on the size container you're putting in. And your make of air fryer. And obviously your make of air fryer as well. So there you go. That is our homemade lasagna. Far better than any shop-bought one you'll get. And it is so much more tasty. We've had quite a few a of them. A bit of salad and garlic bread and you're away. Yeah. Mm. We did a review on a couple of shop bought ones and uh, this is by far in excess of it. Anyway, thanks very much folks. Don't forget to check out our other food videos. We've got plenty of air fryer recipes there and we've got more coming up as well. Uh, we put three videos out a week, Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. UK time in the evening. And also our Sunday vlog where you can just basically see what we get up to during the week. Yeah, thanks for all you newbies that were there on Sunday. Yeah, yeah lots, lots in. Because there, there is a live chat box. So do come in, have a little chat with us in the chat box and also the other people as well. That goes out at 8pm on a Sunday evening. And as I say, me and Sharon are in the chat box as well. So we're going to finish this off now. Put our feet up. Watch the telly. Watch your butt. Eh? We don't watch telly. We watch YouTube, Sharon. Yeah. And one of the channels we watch is Butler's Empire. <laughs> We're going, folks. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye, bye. for now. You have that little bit, Shell. I'll have that bit. See you later, folks. So.